a hitbox. Dustin here. We're going over recovery angles today. We're going to be using Foxfire, but this works for any of the spaces, uh, any teleporters like uh, Palatina, Mewtwo, all that good stuff. So if you're a Zelda main, this is definitely the tutorial for you. Similarly, Pikachu, Pichu with their zips. So you might be noticing that when I get these angles, my thumb is on the D-pad. However, it's not behaving as a D-pad. In fact, nothing, nothing's happening when I press these buttons. That's because these are modifiers that are just like tilt, uh, like this tilt one, um, only they behave slightly different. Um, but if in case yours is giving you taunts, that is because you are in D-pad mode. And that's how we've been leaving it for, the, for these tutorials, is just in D-pad mode. So, you, so when it's in the line position on the switch, it behaves as a typical D-pad. However, if you want to get access to these extra angles, tilt it into modifier mode, and now you have these additional modifiers that are similar to tilt one. Now how they're different is this is called X1. It walks slow, just like the tilt button. However, it allows you to jump. So it's only slightly tilted left and right, but up and down is still full tilt. So what happens when we're walking a little bit and we go all the way up? We're slightly to the right and all the way up. That gives us a really steep recovery angle. So um, what we're going to do is go X1, right, and up all at the same time like a piano chord while we do our fox fire. fire. We hold it, and then it will come out at that angle. So this is X1 because it's X axis, left and right. This is Y1, and it tilts the Y axis. So it tilts up and down. However, now left and right are unchecked. So we're going to go all the way to the right and only slightly up, and that will give us the opposite angle. It will be a really far-reaching recovery angle. So there's X1 and Y1, and now there's also X2 and Y2. So the differences are X1 is a really slow walk. X2 is a faster walk, so it's just a, a regular walk. So rather than being a little bit to the right, we're now a little bit further to the right, so we're tilted a little bit farther, meaning our angle is a little bit further reaching. So crazy steep, a little bit, uh, a little bit less. So um, same thing with Y1 and Y2. Y1 is going to be the furthest reaching recovery. Y2 is, you know, a little bit higher of an angle. So these are all the angles that you need to actually grab the ledge. However, I'll show you a little bit more because there's more than that. And Smash Ultimate is very lenient on your ledge grabs, so that's literally everything you need to know. Um, everything I'm going to show you from here on out is not mandatory. So um, there is a secret modifier for X and a secret modifier for Y. Now, like I said, these are not mandatory, but they're pretty cool. If you go X1 and X2 at the same time, that gives you a new modifier called X3. So let me show you. Um, X, um, X1, Fire. X2, Fire. and now I'm going to press X3, Fire. and that's a different angle. So um, you go X1 and X2 at the same time while you do the diagonal. Fire. Now, there's also one for Y. It's a little bit harder to hit, but it's still there. Y3 and diagonal Fire. gives you this angle. So let me go through the entire thing like a musical scale, starting with Y1. I'm going to go Y1. Fire. Y2, Y3, uh, the diagonal, X3, X2, and X1. So we have quite the spectrum of angles to work with. This is everything you need. And beyond that, using the, uh, the software designer, so the Smashbox designer, you can customize these angles. You can add more angles. You can get um, a ton, a ton of angles. But this is the basics and everything you need to know using the default profile, how to grab the ledge.